Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to continue talking about Niagara renderer bindings in Unreal 4. But this time, we're going to use all of the renderers. So to get this started, I've gone ahead and created three master materials and created three material instances from those master materials. The first one is going to be for the mesh renderer. And in here, we just have a particle color plugged into the emissive color. And everything else is pretty much default. So we have default lit, opaque, surface. Now the second master material, this is for the sprite. And in here, it's kind of similar. We have the particle color plugged into emissive color, but then we have the alpha being multiplied by a texture sample. And that texture sample is called grayscale. This texture comes with the game engine by default. And the last thing is that this is set the default lit and the blend mode is translucent. Now the last master material we have is the ribbon. And this one is actually set up just like the first one. It's pretty simple. And then I've gone and made three material instances of those mass materials. These material instances, we're going to use those on our renderers. But the mass materials, we might come back to them at the end. So to get this started, I'm going to right click in my content browser and I'm going to create a Nugger emitter from an empty blank template. And then I'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want. And then we'll open it up and we'll save it so it can compile. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to emitter update and we need to spawn something. So I'm going to start with the spawn burst instantaneous and I'm going to set that to one just so that we have one particle spawning for now. And I'm actually going to get rid of the sprite render. We want to start with a mesh and in this mesh render, I'm going to go to the particle mesh and I'm looking for arrow. Now you should see S underscore arrow. This is a mesh that comes with the game engine. And then we're gonna go to override materials. And in here, I'm gonna click on the plus icon and I wanna add the material instance that I just made. All the Ren 01 mesh. And we can see that it's showing up. And just to make sure, I'm gonna to come to initialize particle and I'm gonna double check the color mode. I'm gonna change this to direct set and then I'm going to change this to blue and you see that this gets colored blue. It's perfect. So I'll leave that back as a default of white. And then next, I want to add a sprite render, but I want to add it and offset it from this arrow. So the way that we do that is we have to add our sprite render. And then I want to change the size of this because it seems to be a little bit big. It's a little big by default. So in sprite size mode, if I just set this to uniform, it's gonna adjust its size right away. So that looks a lot better. But if we come to the sprite render, come down the bindings, we wanna adjust this position and we wanna make a custom position for this. So in particle update, I'm gonna add a set, set new existing parameter directly. I'm gonna add a new parameter and we want it to be a vector because that's what the binding position is a vector. Now you can see that if we try and move this, it's not working yet. And that's because we need to set it up. So we're going to come to sprite render and in position binding, this is where now we can add our new vector. Now if I come back to new vector and I just adjust this, you can see that it's working. But there is a little bit of a caveat to this because if we go and add velocity to this and we fix so we can get solve forces in velocity, and we'll add some velocity here. We'll just add one because these are really small. Let it compile. If we let this play. You'll see that our sprite isn't moving yet. We were able to offset it, but it's not moving with the arrow and the offset. And that's because we need to add the position of this arrow. So in our new vector, we're actually going to change this to add vector. And now in A, we're going to search for position and we want particles position. That particles position is going to be what our mesh renderer is. And now we can offset this and it'll move with it. Perfect. Now I want to get a little creative with this. So instead of just offsetting this, I want to be able to rotate this. So I'm going to convert B into a rotate vector. Now what we have going on here is the vector to rotate, 
This is basically what we just had before, where now we can offset it, you know, to wherever we want. And now, the yaw, pitch, and roll, this is where we want it to rotate. Now, one thing you'll notice is, if we let this play, if we let this play without the add velocity, that compile, you'll see that it's not actually animating. It's not doing anything. But, set this real low. If we change the delta time, right now the delta time isn't doing anything for us. But instead, if we base this on emitter age, you can see that now this is rotating on the yaw. And if we increase this, basically this is going to be a higher rate. It's going to rotate faster. So I'm going to set this to 100, and then I'll set this to 120, and the third one I'll set to 105, just for randomness. And now you can see that it's doing random loop motions, which is pretty cool. And now for the vector to rotate, we can also convert this to a float so that we're basically changing each one of these at once. And then this float, we can change this to a random range float. So now we're, we can change between a minimum and a maximum on all of those axes at once. So I'll set this to something like two, something real close, and then something a little further, 24. Just see what that does. Pretty cool. Now I did notice that this is still square. So I'm gonna to come to my sprite render. I'm going to change this to my material instance that I made, uh, and the sprite version. And we can see that that's showing up now. Let that play. Cool, that looks good. Now let's take a look at the ribbon renderer. So if I add the ribbon renderer, and I come and change my material to the material instance that I made, what you'll notice is nothing is showing up. And the complicated thing about this is where a mesh render and a sprite render, even the light render, they only need one spawn. They can have a minimum of one spawn. The ribbon renderer needs more than one. So if you're going to use a ribbon renderer in here, you have to have at least a spawn count of two. And we're gonna turn on the add velocity, but you also don't want to use the spawn burst. We want to use spawn rate if you want the ribbon renderer to work. So I'm going to get rid of the spawn burst and I'm going to look for the spawn rate. Let me set this to one. Let that play. You'll see that as soon as we get to the second one, we're starting to get our ribbon, right? We need at least two particles to spawn. Now we want to do something a little bit fun. So I'm going to take out the add velocity. Instead, I'm going to initialize these uh, to start on a sphere, a sphere location. Just let that play to see what it looks like. As they spawn in, you see them just stacking. Boom, 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 boom. But they're not really moving yet. We, we, have, we have these orbs moving, right? They're all kind of moving at the same rate as well. But let's get these arrows moving around. So under particle update, I'm going to add a vortex velocity. And you want to make sure that this is above solve forces and velocity. And the velocity amount, this is basically just the intensity. This is the speed. All right, so I'm going to change this to a random range float. And I'll make this go between 10 and 180. Let's see what that does. We can see now they're moving around. Specifically right now, they're moving around on the vortex axis of the Z. So if we had this going and we increased any one of these, you would see that they would start to be pushing in one specific direction. So you see how they're all whipping to the left right now. So I'm also going to change this into a random vector. Now, all right, this is really interesting now. We'll just slowly start to see these move around. Now 
Now, one more thing I want to do here is I want to make it so the arrows are actually going in the direction of the velocity. And the way we do that is by coming to the mesh renderer and we want to lay, and we want to take a look at the facing mode where it says default, we're going to change this to velocity. And now you can see that these arrows look like they're zipping around, right? And then we have these orbs circling around them and we have the ribbons attached to the arrows. Now that new vector that we set up, basically our offset for our sprite render, right? We set that up here in the position binding. We can come to the ribbon renderer and we can also come to the position bindings. So right now they're following the arrows as they spawn in, but maybe we wanted to make them follow the sprite. So we'll set that to the new vector. Let that play. You see that now they're following the orbs. That's pretty cool. All right. So now let's come back to initialize particle and let's give them a color. We're going to give them something like blue. And now we're going to add our light renderer. Now in our light renderer, we want to make sure that we set our color add to 1, 1, 1. This way we're getting the full color range for the lights. And the next thing we need to do is we need to add a scale color so that that affects the color added. So in particle update, we're gonna add a scale color and I'm gonna change the scale RGB to a float so that we're changing it just to an intensity. We're not changing all the colors separately, but we're changing them all together. And now I'm gonna change that float to a curve. And what I wanna say is, I want both the beginning and the end to be a value of one. And then in between, we're gonna have these two other keys. And I'm gonna set these to 60 or maybe, maybe even more, 80, right? And then for all the keys, we're gonna select them all. I'm gonna right click and click auto so it smooths them all out. Now we'll just take a look at this real quick for the emissive intensity. Cool, all right, so now we need to go and make sure that our light render is working. So I'm gonna close out of this and I'll save it. And then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create my Niagara system. I'll call it NS02. I'm gonna drag this out into the world. Try and lower this. So we're gonna go through the floor. And if we look really closely, any time that an arrow comes near the floor, we're getting light, we're getting blue light, right? But anytime that a sphere comes towards the ground, we're not getting any light there. And that's because in our emitter, our light renderer, if we come down to bindings, this is set to position binding, position. And that's what our arrows are set up as by default, right? So if we wanted to have lights for the spheres as well in those positions, we would have to come and add another light renderer and then this time under bindings we go to position binding and we change this to our new vector our offset so we'll save that and we'll go take a look for solo and you can just kind of see it as some of the spheres yep Yeah. So now we have our mesh render, our sprite render, our ribbon render, and we have two light renders. Now, right now, each one of these renders have all the same color applied to them. So in our initialized particle, if we come in here, we can go and change each one of the colors all together. That looks pretty crazy. But if you wanted to change these independent, that's where we would go into our materials. Right, so instead of actually setting a color here at all, you know, so if we just turn this to on set, these would all be a generic white, right? What we would do is we would wanna come into our materials and we would wanna set up each one of our master materials to have color control. So in the mesh, right, we would come in here, we're gonna add a vector three, we're gonna convert this to a parameter Call this emissive color. 
and multiply that by our particle color. And then we'll come to our sprite material. We're gonna do the same thing for the particle color here. So we're gonna make a vector three and we're gonna multiply these together. I'm gonna to convert the vector three to a parameter, emissive color, plug that in, save it. And then we'll go to our ribbon and we'll do the same thing for this. Vector three, multiply, plug them all in, convert this to a parameter, emissive color, save this one. Now, if we close out of these and we go and open up our material instances, you can see that our system is all black right now because that's what we fed into them by default. But if we open up the mesh first, and we'll set this to the side so we see this on the left. If we turn on the emissive, now we can just go and adjust this. We'll make this red, right? And then our sprite. Maybe we'll actually just make this white. No, or a blue. We'll make this blue. And then our ribbon. We'll also make this blue. So from here, there's a lot of things you can play with. And honestly, you probably don't really need three master materials. You could probably get away with one or two. And then you can make a few material instances from there to be a little more efficient. But if you guys thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.